Welcome back to Off Plan Investments Unplugged 2. I'm Simon Baker and joined again by Rennie Sanger. We're here to answer all of your off plan real estate questions. Today, we're going to be talking about how to scale your property portfolio. We are. So, where would we start with that, Rennie? Um, it's an interesting one, right? Because that's, that's probably a top question that a lot of people ask, you know, how do they almost double down on the investments and, and make them stronger? Um, I think for me, the probably the most popular one is to kind of have a mixed bag of investments. Mm -hmm. So not just kind of be bogged down to one sort of unit type, so to speak. Um, so for me, that looks like apartments, townhouses, maybe villas, of course, depending on how much money you want to spend and how much cash you have available mm. to you. Um, but if you did have the, the privilege of being able to buy multiple properties, I would definitely kind of go across the board. So apartments, townhouses and villas. Um, that also links back to the supply and demand element of as well, right? So as we know, townhouses and villas are massively undersupplied. Um, I believe it's villas make up about 5% of the entire market. Mm. Townhouses just being approximately 9% of the entire market. So there's definitely a shortage of them. Um, so if you could pick those mm. up with a couple of really well-located apartments, I think you do pretty well. Sure. Okay, great. So like, supply and demand is obviously really important, especially when we're selling off plan. Um, last year, I think you, you touched on 5% villas. I think last year there was only 1.4% off yeah, plan right, villas yeah. that were sold. I guess as developers, uh, land's getting more valuable and they're trying to fit right. more properties on, less and less independent villas are being sold. So yeah, yeah, if you're in that market, I think great. We, we've certainly have some investors that just buy independent villas, That's don't right, they? Yeah. And they maybe just buy them from, from, from the biggest, best developers, which goes against the question really, because you know, in terms of, in terms of um, growing your portfolio, it's certainly, that's certainly not that diverse, but the, the reality is that maybe they, they do provide, you know, the, the best potential capital growth, certainly. Definitely. Now, in, ter in terms of making sure that you can scale your investment portfolio, I guess the other thing to look at is obviously rental returns yep. and to make sure that you wouldn't necessarily say, right, I'm just going to go and purely buy studios and make sure I get 8%. Yeah, of course. No, exactly. you but you would potentially want some of that to make sure, I, I would certainly, I don't know what your thoughts are, but I would certainly look at a return of at least 6% net across my whole portfolio to really? make sure that six or six and a half percent, I think is quite an achievable number. Yeah. It's a sensible target. You can have some apartments within that that are generating maybe 8% and maybe yeah. some of the villas maybe do generate five or five and a half. Yeah. Um, but that can at least give you a bit of a diverse portfolio as well. Yeah, agreed. And then of course you, you're you hedging your bets against maybe interest rates. So if you are leveraging some of that, then mm. at least um, you should be pay getting at least an income that sits above your kind of baseline for the interest rate. And then on, in addition to that, hopefully you're not really leveraging more than kind of 65% um, from the bank as well mm. to make sure that you're not really sitting in negative equity. So I think that's quite a sensible number. Yeah. So it's always probably going to be the debate forever and a day, isn't yeah. it? As to how much, you know, it's partly down to the individual, what's their appetite for risk. But yeah, in the Western world, you would probably, people would be, be looking at sometimes 80, even 90% debt. Correct, right? exactly. You know, debt. Exactly. So um, loan to value. So the question obviously is, is very subjective. It's down to the individual yeah. um, as to what's acceptable. I guess. Yeah, I guess so. I mean, it's probably quite a short answer, to be honest with you, but I, I think you've hit the nail on the head. It's just understanding the different ways you can kind of scale your investments. Uh, another one for me would be probably be spreading across locations and mm. maybe even developers. So as we know, like email, for example, they kind of very much sit within the kind of master communities. Mm -hmm. And then you might find some boutique developers who kind of hop in and out of some of these master communities that yeah. email would typically build. Um, so the likes of Ellington properties and so on. And again, the, the benefit there would be the difference in payment plans and, and delivery dates. So for example, based on more recent launches, EMA typically for an apartment or, or any given community now are saying about three and a half to four years for completion. Mm. But if you're entering the market mm. today and just buying everything with a four year sort of completion, then you've got a lot of money out, not really True. doing too much for you. And at that's the probably not the best advice. No, right? not at so all. Maybe if you're looking to, you know, certainly to scale your portfolio and to try and ge generate income, then it's Correct. probably quite important to start thinking about real estate supposed to be real, right? So yes, as much as exactly. we love selling off plan property, at some point that thing that has to hand over yeah. and that someone has to manage it and all the rest of it, uh, which we come on to in different in different uh, different videos. But but yeah, so at some point it needs to be real. Real real estate needs to be real and it needs to start generating you an income. Correct, exactly. So I think yeah, if, if you can, um, in terms of scale, if you can plan to have units that hand over over the next two or three years yeah. Um, steadily, yeah, then yeah, I yeah. Think that's, uh, and then again, it's the other way of looking at it. If you have bought maybe a few and they are on 
you know, you purchase them off plan, but have different sort of handover dates is knowing that once you kind of fulfilled those payments, you can then leverage that and then freeze up more cash to continue the payments on the other properties that you've committed to. Sure. And if you kind of really got it all balanced out, it can actually be like a well-oiled machine. It's just making sure you've kind of set out all the payment terms and you've got yeah. a good Excel spreadsheet <laughs> understanding and your plan cash carefully and obviously Correct. make sure that you've got a good mortgage broker to support yes, you, yes, a good management company to make sure they're managing it and the, the units are being paid for. Yeah. Um, and I think that low, yeah, you mentioned 60, 65%. I think that's very sensible. I think if you've got 30, 35% equity in all those properties, I think you're in a very, very strong position Agreed, yeah. um, that you will never, you know, ever be in negative equity and that you can then continue to plan to scale, you know, to yeah. scale that in portfolio for the future, right? Which is what what, which what's what what's what the goal is so. yeah absolutely i mean again some of those investments that we're discussing as well you know you'd like to think that some of them would have achieved some really good capital appreciation so then at which point you could then sell on mm. another um way you could obviously leverage on some of these investments that you already have is being able to refinance against some of these properties as well right so some people may don't possibly don't actually have the cash mm. to hand to kind of reinvest, but maybe sitting on a bit of equity. We could, in or could be properties. able to could be able to leverage that with the bank, right? Which yeah. is really important. And it also, I guess, depends a bit on what age you are and what and what your what your you know investment goals are. Certainly, Correct. your goals for your pro property portfolio. You know, yeah. if, if you if we're sitting here and you've got you, you're you're in you're in thirty or forty and you've got another twenty years of working in front of you, you'd be in a very very different position than someone who was perhaps a bit older, maybe 55, sure. 60, that was looking to retire next. Next year, Correct. you know, goals, the person yeah. who's about to retire wants to generate as much as much income as possible. For so sure. you'd want to pay off that property, absolutely, that investment as portfolio, as you you yeah. and make sure that it's paid for and it starts paying for your retirement. Absolutely. Whereas we might be sitting here today and thinking, right, let's let it, let's t take on a bit more debt, create a bit more leverage Correct. to build a bigger portfolio. We can accept the fact that we don't make a, a return, let's say, a monthly income course, for yeah, the next, yeah, yeah. say, ten or fifteen or twenty years, yeah. because we're working and we're making income that way. Yeah, but we want to generate the biggest pool possible Absolutely. so that when we do retire, yeah. that obviously creates an even bigger rental return, which and I think, I think is probably that, quite important. That comes down to kind of really good conversations as well, right? So a question I often ask people as well is, you know, wh what is a plan when we're mm. trying to understand someone's financial objectives? It's actually that, you know, of course, who doesn't want a second income or a passive income, but do you need it to sustain your current lifestyle or is it just like a nice to have? I mean, a great nice to have, mind mm. you, but yeah, of course. do you actually need yeah. it to sustain your lifestyle? And if it's the latter, then it's a slightly different conversation but I think sometimes you can be maybe a bit more daring and say, why don't we buy something, get some real good compound interest, if you like, mm. and then maybe flip that. And then we kind of repeat that process. But like you said, on the basis that you might have 10, 15, 20 years <laughs> yeah. of work. And, and if you have got yeah. that, I think in you know, that idea of delayed, delayed gratification, yeah. if you don't need to make an income now, you'd be much better off in effect reinvesting that money. Correct. As you said, maybe making capital growth, potentially selling that, then buying some you know properties purely for rental investment at Correct. seven, 8% with a view that hopefully once you make the pool as big as possible, yeah. uh, make the nest egg as big as possible, if you like, yeah, then yeah. The, the, that, you know, that monthly income you will make in the future will hopefully be even bigger. To, yeah, so, you know, generate a dr dream lifestyle that everyone's looking for. Yeah. Um, I think we've pretty much covered all of it there. Thank you very much, Rennie. Thank and you. Um, look forward to, uh, to our next video next time. Super, thanks.